Hey everyone, on today's video I want to share with you my favorite tips for adding textures to my illustrations using Photoshop. So let's get started! Okay, so the first one is super easy and simple. I'm gonna use a soft brush. I'm gonna take some color, doesn't really matter what color. I'm gonna use for this one and you know whatever I draw if it's soft enough when I change the layer blending mode into dissolve I'll get this really nice and grainy texture uh, so this is simple and fast and I just love using this effect um, so let's see how it applies into an um, illustration so for example I'm gonna use I'm gonna change the shadow on this bear's head so uh, yeah, let me just pick the shadow color and then use a soft brush and kind of add the shadows for this one. And then what I need to do is switch from normal to dissolve and boom, there you have it. And the best thing about it is you don't need any specific brushes or you don't need to find any photographs of texture or stuff like that. You can just do it using Photoshop and that's it. Okay, for the next tip, I'm gonna use a noise filter to add some grainy texture into the illustration and what well, you can obviously do it straight into your illustration if you're done with, with it and you don't need to work on the layers or anything else, you can just merge down the illustration and then, you know, go to filter, noise, add noise and you got this little window where you can play with the amount of texture that you're gonna get out of it so i, I prefer using a uh, gaussian because it, it gets more grainy and then you know just play with the amount i guess around like 30 uh, 13 percent would be uh, nice and grainy and that's it you just apply it to the illustration and you get this really nice noise into the whole thing uh, the problem with it is that if you do it straight to the illustration, now you cannot work on top of the illustration you're gonna, because you're going to lose the texture. So what I prefer doing in this kind of situations, I'll prefer to just add a new layer on top of my illustration and fill it with a gray color. I'm going to use something like a mid, a mid tone, not too dark, not too uh, white because I want I want to be able to move the blending mode into uh, overlay and basically what I have now is an overlaid gray color that doesn't affect the color of the illustration but now when I'm going to apply this filter I'm going to apply the noise again I'm going to add noise then I get this grainy look on top of my illustration and this time I get it without affecting the actual layers of the illustration so this is a great solution and I can just switch it off and on in my layer panel and I can actually use a mask on top of it as well and hide some parts that I don't want to get if I don't want the grain to be all over the illustration now if I'm gonna use a mask let me just show you the difference so okay this is let's use a mask and hide some of the texture here and you can see the difference between you know this side which is just clean pink and this side which is you know grainy and you, know, you have this really nice texture going on so uh, yeah I really like using it it's a very nice solution it's very it's very uh, subtle and it's not really dramatic but still adds some sort of warmth into the illustration that I really like using Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about adding uh, photo textures into your illustration and well, the easiest way to do it is just to find an interesting texture like this one and sometimes you don't need much. I mean, at this specific illustration, I just changed the color. I went to uh, my UN saturation panel and I play with it until I got into uh, this blue and yellow colors that I kind of liked and just, I think I made it a bit more saturated, but that's it. I just applied it on top of the shirt and got this really nice texture going on and, and this is a, a, just an interesting solution that I think a lot of people don't really think about when they 
work on the computer, they just go automatically to the brushes that they know and or using the shapes and the gradients, which are very easy and uh, the faster thing and the fastest thing you can do uh, when you're drawing in Photoshop. But uh, I just I think it's a, it's good to sometimes think about different you know photos and texture you can add to your illustration to make them more unique. So. Uh, this is a very simple one without any, without playing with the blending modes, but I'm gonna play with the blending modes now and show you what I like to do. So uh, let's find an interesting texture for this one. Okay, I think I used the wood one, so uh, let's drag it into Photoshop. I'm gonna put it on top of the illustration. I'm gonna make sure it kind of covers the whole thing. And then this is where the fun part starts, basically. I mean, I, I just like to play with different blending modes for the layer of the texture and see what happens and what I can come up with. So for this texture, I think I, I ended up using overlay or maybe it was soft light, which uh, brings out this texture kind of on top of the, of the bear. It kind of brings out the dark parts of the wood um, and you get this really interesting texture. So uh, I think for this one, I actually changed the wood panel into pink before I did that. This way I think it, it works better because my color palette has some pink in it. So once I'm changing the wood into a pink uh, color with, uh, with a simple, you know, hue and saturation effect, uh, I'll just go now into soft light or maybe I think it was overlay. Okay, the overlay is a bit more dramatic. Yeah, you can see it makes the dark tones a bit darker and Get this really interesting texture on top of the illustration and now I'm gonna add a, a mask and I'm gonna hide everything and just reveal the texture in specific parts that I think the highlight of the I mean the fur the fur of the bear gets the highlight um, so this is a really fun way to add some texture to illustrations I'm gonna have something on top of the diamond as well and and this is a bit too dramatic, so I'm gonna reduce the opacity into like 80%. Yeah, that's better. And get this really fun and weird texture. It kind of changed the color of the illustration as well, but um, it, this is where, you know, things get interesting and just a matter of, you know, playing with different te textures and see what happens uh, until you get to, into something that is interesting enough. Yeah, let's try this watercolor one. Okay, let's see. I'll put it on top of everything. And yeah, with soft light maybe. Yeah, it looks kind of weird, but yeah, you get you can get a really interesting texture here. Um, and then, so I'm gonna, again, hide it with mask and just reveal it in some parts, like here. And you get this uh, watercolor look to your illustration, and and I know the color is not perfect right now, so I'm gonna let me just rest, rasterize it and play with the hue and saturation again until I get into something more pinkish. Yeah. Wait, maybe. Yeah. So this is kind of subtle, but uh, again, it depends on the texture. So I'm just you know changing things. I find something interesting so oh shit so yeah I think on, it, it, it works really nice on the diamond you can see the difference the diamond looks much much better with this uh, water watercolor texture on top of it so uh, yeah it's just a, ma a matter of you know testing things and seeing what works and obviously you should save as many textures as you can find, you know, scan things, take photographs, look online for interesting textures and just have a huge texture folder with all, the, all your textures. It's really hand, handy and uh, I just like, you know, playing and testing stuff. It never gets boring. Okay, another cool thing that you can do with uh, photo texture is, is you can use, you can pick specific areas from the texture and apply it to the illustration. So for this one, I'm going to use um, select, I'm going to click on select and then color range. 
and then you got this little window and what you need to do is you need to pick a specific color from the texture let's go with the uh, with this one which is kind of no let's go with the mid-tone yeah so here you can see uh, the selection that is gonna happen once you click OK and you can play with the fuzziness um, and kind of reduce it if you want less or more of the texture um, and it depends again on the te on the image that you're working with so for this one yeah let's let's use this let's try to select it and see what happens I'm gonna lose the original texture because I don't need it now and I'm gonna add a new layer and fill it with black so as you can see now I have this huge texture on top of my illustration and I can actually see through the texture and maybe I've selected too much of it this time so let's do it again a smaller uh, portion of the color range yeah so let's go for um, for this and kind of reduce it into this okay let's see what happens so again I have a selection and I'm gonna fill it with black in a new layer on top of my illustration and you see I can I got this really interesting uh, texture on top of it and that kind of makes everything look kind of old and grainy uh, so uh, I really like doing this for my black and white illustration because it really works well and it looks kind of old and rusty and I really like uh, the, the feeling that I get from uh, working this way. Okay, let's try something with the bare illustration this time. Yeah, this will work. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to fill it with, with a random color just to, sh to show you what the texture looks like. And now I'm going to go to the head. Let's add a new layer and then I'm going to reselect this texture and going to just fill it in with a dark color from on top of the head. And as you can see, I get this really, really nice texture going on. Um, so it, it's, uh, it really depends on what you're working with and the type of texture that you got. That you got. But uh, look at this. This is super cool. Um, and I wasn't expecting. I didn't know like what's going to happen. I just randomly picked a... Uh, texture from my folder and it looks really cool so again you just need to play with it and see what happens here I'm gonna, I'm gonna add some texture to the hand as well and this works you know this works great uh, as you know to add texture to your shadows uh, but you can work you can add textures to your highlights as well um, and you, all, you just need to change the color and see what happens so uh, Again, this is one of my favorite uh, tips, you know, this is one of my favorite tricks that I like doing uh, when I'm working on illustrations. Okay, so for the last tip, I'm gonna show you how to create this really cool halftone effect for your shadows. Um, and so, so this is really easy, all you need to do is to draw the same shadow with a soft brush. I'm gonna pick the pink color again, the dark pink that I used for this one and I'm gonna take a soft brush and just draw it here let's add a bit of shadows here as well and that's it, now I'm ready to create this effect so what I do is I control click on the layer itself and then I get the selection this area basically selected of you know the area of what I just drawn and now I'm, I'm gonna turn it off I don't need any, I don't need this layer anymore so um, I'm gonna turn it off and go to the channels and in the channels I'm gonna create a new channel and fill it with uh, white so um, go to edit fill just fill it with white once you have it filled in white all you need to do is go to filter, pixelate, and use color halftone. Then you get this uh, window pop-up, and I have no idea what these uh, different numbers mean. Uh, all I do is, all I know is, you know, if if you you have a specific number here, it's gonna affect the size of the circles of the ha the halftone in, in the end of the process. So. 
you can try and you know use something like 20 or like I don't know 16 and let's see what uh, what what happens let's try okay let's try 30 just for fun let's see what 30 30 is gonna give give us with this uh, filter oh, okay you see the, the circles are way too big so this is what happens when you do uh, a number that is too big so I'm gonna Control Z, and I'm gonna go. This uh, sorry, pixelate color half tone, and I'm gonna change the number into 20, and put 20 in all of these boxes, and then you get yeah. Th these are already a bit better. I think I'm gonna go with uh, something like 15. Okay, now it looks better. I'm gonna control click again on my new uh, texture here on the channel. So I'm control click and I got the selection that I want. Now I can just delete this one. I'm gonna drag it into the trash and go back into my layers panel and add, add a new layer and fill it with my dark pink. And that's it. There you have it. You got this nice half tone texture it works according to the brush that I used uh, for this one it, and now that I have it here in my layer panel I can actually change the color and you know turn it into blue if I want to uh, and you know can get into really interesting results so it's a uh, it's a bit complex you need to remember all these small steps but uh, it's not that difficult and the result is super cool so yeah I like using it a lot actually you can see it all over my illustrations Okay, this is it for today guys. If you're enjoying these videos, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!